Good day guys, it's Brett here again. I um we did that video earlier, this is just a follow up from that image we, we merged through Photomatics. Um so this this was how it finished in Photomatics, this is how we saved it and it went to my folder. So from there I've put it into Photoshop, I've already edited up the image, um I've, I've cut the windows, so Firstly, I'll, I'll show you. This is the actual photo. Now I'll show you how um, I finished it. So this is the photo. And that's the finished product. That's what I'm gonna um, edit up. You know, um, I'll probably straighten these walls. But I mean, as far as the colours go, I'm fine with that. I'll straighten up all my verticals before it gets saved as a high and low res, and before it goes to the agent. So that was it before. That's it now. So what we'll do now is I'll show you exactly what I've done to get it to there. Now, in case you're wondering, this photo was taken out at Cronulla in, in Sydney, or south of Sydney. Um, but anyway, to the photo. So, all right, what I did first is I'll just swap this over. So what you can see what I've done here, I've come up, I've come up here and I've got my selection tool. So make sure you get the polyagonal uh, lasso tool, um, which is it allows you to click and click and click, and then you can put it in the lines you want. So you can go from that corner to that corner, down there, and down there. Now that's basically what I did do, right? But when I do it, I normally zoom in and I go from just inside the corner here. Now yeah, bad example, my bad. Let's go back. So just inside the corner um, to each corner like that I go in nice and close if if you're going to do it um, especially along the water what you want to do is don't go on the outside of the door if you can see it just here come almost in line with the door or even one step back from the door what that does it and um, it prevents that little white haze line you get between the sky and the actual door line so that's the, it's the actual window I use. So if you can see that now, that's the new window. That's the old one, new one. So all I did is once I, I cut it, so I've, I've cut all the new windows. So just so, um, so that's them now. They're all been, that's how I went around every single one of them, okay? So I've gone around them all. So you can probably see here, I could probably go in, in the line a little bit more. But anyway, this is just to show you guys. Um, I've gone around all these ones. Then, I did um, Control J, which um, which gives me a copy of the window, so it puts a new layer up here. We don't need that one. So it gives so Control J will then pretty much cut brand new windows out. So then what I did um, once I've done that, I literally just worked on these windows with color and how I wanted them. Um, so if I put it up to how dark I did do it. That's the windows at 100%. So I went into levels, um, which you can find up. Um, oh. I'm so used to just the, the shortcuts that I don't even know where to find them anymore. Anyway, I think it's for image adjustment and you go to levels. Yeah, there it is. So, so I went to levels and I just sort of darkened up the windows and that as I played pleased how I thought they would look nice and that's what I came up with so that was the colour so once the windows were done they've been cut out I can now go back down to don't worry about these two levels um, two layers over here that's just previous for other things I did so basically we're just working with these two so I've cut the windows out um, copied them and now I can go back to here without worrying about blowing out my windows like now what I do now what I do with the ceiling go back to my selection tool same thing as I did as the windows I do this to most ceilings majority of ceilings are all white even if they aren't you still do it anyway so I literally just follow this all the way around this is just rough like I said guys I'm just doing it roughly it'll still come out good enough alright so there's my ceiling. Now, I'm going to go back to levels again. Control L. 
So there's my levels. Now I'll just play around with it how I sort of want it close enough to a, a bright colour. Um, usually, you know, I'll use the, the middle one here and I'll bring that up straight away because that's an all over. This one here will brighten up the, the bright areas first and then as it is, see how this is a little bit brighter than the dark areas? So it's going to brighten up the bright area first and still leave them slightly dark. So I don't touch that as much as the middle one just for this bit. So we're on 100 now. I'm going to bring it up to say probably about 150, 160. I'll save it, then I'll come back over here on the left hand side, if you can see me over here, to the dodge tool. Now I always use mid-tones, so keep it on mid-tones, and my exposure is only 14% because I don't want to blow it out, you know, and then remember to protect tones, click this little box here to protect your tones. What that's going to do, it's going to protect your, your lights to a certain extent, and any other detail like you know you get those ceilings that have that that thick sort of I don't know what you call them the it goes around the ceiling before the, the actual just goes around the edge of the ceiling and then they've got those slight curves on them so and sometimes they have patterns in them so what protect tones does it'll still brighten them up but it'll keep those patterns so what we'll do now we're working on a large area so I'll just enlarge it and I'll start in the dark areas first you can start to see they're lightening up a bit so, and what Protect Tones does also, if you look over here, just in this area, there's a bit of a shadow there. It won't get rid of that shadow too much, because you want to keep, you want to keep, sort of, um, some shadows in, because, you know, otherwise it just starts to look too plastic and fake. So, you know, you want to, you want to keep them all there. Alright, so, there's that bit done. So, that, that'll do, like, you can make your, you can make your ceiling as bright or not as bright as you like, you know, you can even bring it back down, you don't have to have it that bright, you know, I do mine all bright, only because that's what my agents want, they like bright ceilings, um, now I'll, I'll go to um, saturation, which is, um, oops, that is control U, so if you press control U, bring up your, your hue and saturation, and all I'm going to do is just bring down the saturation a little bit just to slightly get a bit more yellow out of there. That'll do me for the ceiling. Um, now what I'm going to do is I want to go to... Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. Go up to select. Now you want to invert it. So if you see what happened there, I've got the ceiling selected. Invert, then flips that around so I now can work on this area so select invert now it's just this area here now this time I don't really want to protect the tones um, I can fix them up again soon so unclick that and now you just want to work with your dodge tool same thing I always leave mine at 14% never do I touch it um, unless it's for different things except for this you know um, that's that'll be in a different tutorial, but normally for internals, I never change 14% because it allows me to control what I'm working with. Um, so once again, Control L, let's bring up levels, and then I'll just play this middle one again, just bring it up to a sort of an even, so it's not so dark. See how it's like the normal ones about here, it's all dark in this back corner. So I just want to bring it up just a tad, you know, probably 120, close to 130, sort of thing, and then. I'm just going to colour it a bit with the, with the dodge tool, just the dark areas. You can make your brush smaller or bigger, whatever you want. I normally go, the reason I do go bigger is because it gets a larger area and makes it all even, rather than going in here and working on one area and that brightens up and the rest doesn't. So, you know, the larger you go, the easier it sort of all matches in with the rest. Okay, so if we just give this a bit of a once over you know, I'm not going to go too bright for this part I mean I can sort of make them so the ceiling and that match a bit more rather than so bright but deselect it all so that's now that's your image now what I'm going to do is what I normally do this is just me once I'm finished this just gives me a bit more um, adds a little bit more contrast without using the actual contrast tool is I go up to images, down to adjustments, and then all the way down to shadows and highlights. Now, this will start off by blowing out the photo as soon as I click it. 
right? So it gives a real HDR look straight away. So that 35, I normally change it to 16. And then my amount, um, I'll normally go between 8 and 12%. So this one here, I'll try 12. So you, now what that, if, 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 if I go back to zero, you'll see what it does to everything. It just brings everything in, like, and like so it all becomes one, so, and it, it, all, it does it all in one hit, so the ceiling sort of joins in a little bit more. So I'll try eight. I think eight's a little bit better than 12, because 12 was a little bit too dark. Last time, like, last time, I'm going to go here. This time, I'm actually going to use the highlights down here, so it brightens right up. All right, maybe just just a bit here. All right. All right, to me, that's good enough. Now I'll go back up to my, um, back up to the windows, which I started with, which I just selected before, copied out, cut them, and that's what I finished with. Now, what I did do too is I, I this opacity, I brought it down just so, you know, because that looks really like it stands out like, like no one owns it. Anyway, so... It's on 100% now. I'm bringing it down about to 60, just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Okay. So that's it there. You can you can leave it at 100 if you want, if you like it that dark. Um, I just thought it, it stood out too much, so it kind of gave it a faker look. So it's yeah, about 80, actually. I'll stick with 80. Select it. Flatten the image. Yes. And that's pretty much it. I will grab um, these tools here and fix me vertical up later on as I go. But, you know, that's pretty much my room finished. And that's how I'll have it. Um, so, that was the, if we just go back again quickly. That's the original that we started with. Uh, did I just do that then? There we go. So, just bear in mind. This is what we started with, and that's what we finished with. Okay, straight out of Photomatics like that, in the Photoshop for the finished product like that. I'll save it now as my high and low res uh, after I fix all the verticals, but I'm hoping that um, that everyone sort of could keep up with me there. <laughs> and um, yeah, let me know what you think or how you edit. You know, just be good to know what everybody else does, and then um, like I'll, I'll do more videos if you're interested. I can do how I, I do how I drop skies in, replace skies. Um, I don't do things like replace furniture or move things out of the way. But anyway, let's go with that for now. Um, I'm just trying to think. There was one more thing I was going to say. Um, can't remember if I think of it I'll type it in anyway that's it let me know what you think and um, get back to me thank you bye